Welcome to our third day for International Conference on Architecture, Theatre and Culture. We, we are delighted to have Professor Cristina Grazioli here. It is the second time you come as keynote speaker to our conference on behalf of the organizing committee. I thank you for your presence. We are sure the audience knows about your background, but I will present you as usual. Professor Cristina Grazioli is professor in history and aesthetics of stage lightning and Teatri di Figuri, Histories and Aesthetics at the University of Padua. Her research focuses on the relationship between theater and visual arts, German theater at the beginning of the 20th century, aesthetics of puppetry, lightning in the theater. Among her studies was Specchio Grotesco, Marionette e Automi nel Teatro Tedesco del Primo Novecento, Luce e Ombra, Storie, Teori Pratice de Illuminazioni Teatrali, Heine Maria Hilke, Scritti sul Teatro, Humain, no, no, Humain, no Humain, Huck, La Marionette e les autres arts, uh, Dire Luce, Una Reflexione a Due Voci, Sulla Lu, Luce in Sena, uh, She's PA, PI in the project Dire Luce, Le Parole e le Cose che Illuminano, Illuminano la Cena. She's writing a book about Paul Sheabat, and Bruno Taut concept of transparency. And so, Christina? So the title of my paper is Light and Transparency Toward an Expanded Green Theater, Paul Sherbert and Bruno Taut. In my research, I have come across the topic of transparency in different contexts. Transparency is a word that involves a complexity of meanings, both in theory and in practice. We can find it mentioned since the Renaissance uh, with the meaning of the bright effect of light obtained by means of crystal balls made with great artifice filled with water of various colors that due to the transparency of a great light that was behind that diaphanous body emanated a great splendor as we can read for example in a chronicle referring to a Medici family marriage in 1565. During the Age of Enlightenment, transparent and atmospheric facts. Nowadays, the meanings of transparency are countless. As Philip Junot wrote, the fact is that there is transparency and transparency. The term extends to different domains, from photography to visual art, from cinema, from uh, uh, cinema to installations, to new media and politics, uh, and so on. At the beginning of the 20th century, this term is noticeably linked to the new poetic of dramaturgy or the aesthetics of light. Just to mention some authors, we can find it in the Rams, a sort of manifesto in the context of the avant-garde. It's a word that joins together concept and technique, and for our purposes, it is an amazing ground for comparison in interdisciplinary research performance, theatre, cinema, architecture, urbanism. We are going to consider it in Paul Sherbert and Bruno Taut's conceptions. The backdrop for my considerations is the articulated context of interrelation between landscape, paintings, atmosphere, space, stage, light, transparency, botany, shared space, or even immersive space. Um, just uh, some, uh, mm, some biographical information about our two authors. Um, Paul Sherbert was a writer, essayist, playwright, who was a pacifist to the extreme, died in 1914, probably letting himself die of malnutrition as a protest against the war. Studies have usually approached Sherbert in relation to architecture, as far as the theatre is concerned, his texts are almost ignored or considered abstract, unrelated to the stage practice. Moreover, he is studied as a pioneer of the science fiction. Bruno Taut is an author extensively studied as an architect, but practically ignored for his work in the world of theatre. Among the cultural history, historical frameworks, it's interesting interesting to remember all the discovery in science de uh, celebrar de todas as descobertas em ciência e tecnologia 
que reforçam a crença na existência de forças além da percepção humana do visível. Iluminação elétrica, ondas eletromagnéticas, descoberta dos raios-x, telegrafia sem fios e a propriedade radioativa da matéria. O éter é habitado por oscilações, rádios, raios, ondas. Isso implica que a matéria é concebida também como espírito. All this to underline a context where we find an extraordinary correspondence of technical, scientific and philosophical or spiritual issues. This alliance is evidenced by a material, namely the glass, that links together the material and the spiritual, matter and concept, nature and art, or art and technique, Kunst und Technik, as the motto of the first Bauhaus stated. It's not by chance that the name of the community of architects led by Bruno Taut was Gläsernerkette, the crystal chain or the glass chain, a utopian correspondence that took place between November 19 and December 20, involving a group of modernist architects. They expressed their thoughts and feelings in letters which were sent to the whole group. At the core of these exchanges is the theme of reciprocity of soul and body. Just as the body could spiritualize itself through light, so could the spirit attain material form through the medium of the architect. According to Taut, architecture must give form to what Meister Eckert called the spark of soul, Seelenfunklein. Bruno Taut wrote, from the stable to the stars, a chain exists in which everything small becomes big, uh, i.e. close, humanly possible, when the relationship exists, uh, lives in us. The symbol of this relationship is the crystal. But cosmic desire it de is determined by, the word, by this word. For example, in Das Paradis, the Heimat der Kunst, Paradise or the Nation of the Art, uh, written by Sherbat at the end of the 90, reveals a concept of paradise on earth that is based on a new architecture of color and glass. And Taut wrote, I believe that all spirits, the material spirits, the plant, animal and human spirits, the elemental spirits and the absolutely spiritual spirits come together in a great unity. The effect of this unity is the act of building in a universal sense. The harmony among all beings is a recurrent concept in the letters of the chain. We can consider Ernst Haeckel's uh, unity of nature, all things, whether living or not, contain a spiritual element in them, a spiritual unity that includes monistic philosophy, zoology, botany and mineralogy, human beings and the cosmos. These three authors are all uh, often cited in the letters of the chain. Another recurring reference is Gustav Fechner, the father of psychophysics. For him, every aspiration towards harmony and beauty should pursue the cosmic dimension. Taut wrote that he no longer wanted to limit his, himself to elaborate projects on Schauungarbeiten. He needed to approach reality. Film and stage projects are, in my opinion, a possible outcome of this research. One of these architects, Vasily Lukard, evokes the profound impression caused by a phenomenon of nature. After walking the dunes, the sight of the sea opens up with a shimmering of thousands of white caps rolling ashore following a secret and unique law of motion, and he wonders whether similar impressions can also be created in, in architecture, formerly the Schumann Circus renovated by Hans Pölzig for Reinhardt in 1919. He wrote, 
The large dome inside is hung with an infinite number of cones which are set in gently arching motion by the roundness of the dome from which they hang, so that when the small incandescent bodies in each cone are illuminated, in particular the impression of a certain dissolution and infinity arises. He gives another example, just some other pictures of other spaces of the same theatre, who reminds organic forms. He gives another example. My impressions of nature, as I have described them, were determined by phenomena of movement. I think that every work of art, therefore also the work of construction that wants to be an image of forms, must also contain such movement. Panta Rei. I'm reminded of a drawing from Bruno Taut's architectural play in this sense, where a radiant dome star, the star of the cathedral, dances through the space of words. It's wonderful. Panta Rei. Taut's architectural play refers to the Weltbaumeister. We will see it in a moment. In this context, uh, the one of the Glesner Kette, Taut publishes the Galoche and des Glucks, the Galoches of Fortune, a full-length fairy tale film in two millennia from Christian Andersen. The Italian translation appeared in the seminal study by Manfredo Tafuri, was quoted, uh, analyzed by Evelyn yesterday, La Sfera e il Labirinto. The Sphere and the Labyrinth is the English edition of 1870. On the back cover of the first edition, the Italian edition, we can read. It's possible, is it possible to derive from the historical avant-garde and even earlier from certain moments in the culture of the 18th and 19th centuries a positive project that overturns the anguish in which contemporary man struggles in his attempt to dominate his environment? I think it's a topical question uh, posed in 1980. After the chapter, the wicked architect Giovan Battista Piranesi, Heterotopia and the Voyage, and the historicity of the avant-garde Piranesi and Eisenstein, Tafuri places the chapter, the stage as a virtual city, from Fuchs to the Total Theater. In the appendix, besides Piranesi or the Fluidity of Forms by Eisenstein, Tafuri published Taut's The Galoshes of Fortune, a text pervaded by light and by the dimension of ascent in the longing for earthly and heavenly fusion, where vegetable shapes are generated from glowing glass sphere like fireflies. Taut composed other important works uh, in 19. In 20. The Auflos und der Städte, the dissolving town, um, the Alps architecture, the, uh, the crown of the town, uh, an image of, of the Alps architecture, consider all a uh, utopian project, um, all of which are projects marked by verticality, featuring the model of the medieval cathedral merged with the natural organic element. All these projects are conceived on the principle of dynamism of forms in space and on the constructive value of color as a means of composition. In Taut's concept, color never has a decorative or illustrative function. It is a building material. Among his projects, we are especially interested in the Weltbaumeister, the word architect or the word builder an architectural drama for symphonic music. In the above-mentioned letter, Luca cites the domster, the star of the cathedral. This star of the cathedral, who appears in Alpine Architecture and also in the Welt by Baumeister, is a dramaturgical presence and a symbolic element that connects the new architecture with the myth of the cathedral that is the medieval conception of light, space, cosmos. The clear and resplendent in yellow, diffused in an abstract space without surface, the colored light, 
radiant yellow, nothing else, no floor, no ceiling, no walls, music without crescendo, just a vibration in the space, a long clear ringing sound, shining in yellow. From the bottom some shapes appear and with them some figures in the music. With the shapes these musical figures become richer, they increase in volume and colour. A gothic cathedral rises in the empty space. It rises slowly from below, it grows, it gives shape to its own, it collapses, uh, disseminating its parts in a cosmic dance of fragments. The paradise, uh, as uh, Manfredini wrote, on the highest hill, a new crystal house, uh, the glass palace, blossoms, the highest synthesis of nature and artifice. The limits of the space dissolve, the elements become mutable figures of a radiant movement on, of intense coloring and infinite arborescence. One day there will be a unique art, and in this art, light will penetrate in the fifth dimension, a dimension of simultaneity and immediacy of experience. We suggest a comparison with some aspects of Eisenstein's writing about stereoscopic cinema and this project of the glass house uh, that dates uh, 29-13. The Weltbaumeister is dedicated to Scherbart. In fact, astral presences, dance, light, sound acting in a cosmic process are closely reminiscent of Scherbart's cometentance. I will not describe here the dance of the comets, uh, as I have already written about this astral pantomime in detail in other writings. Let us just recall the duality between earth and heaven, human and astral, light and darkness, all symbols of the attempt to access the superior sphere. Dance and music are the means that make the dialogue possible. Sherbert wrote numerous articles and essays devoted to the stage and theatre. Moreover, a number of novels convey his theatrical conception and his inventions. Therefore, many narrative writings can be read as an attempt to give form to this theatrical idea. He dreams of a new theatre which features the characteristics of what he expresses when he speaks of architecture. In Glass Theater, Sherbart imagines a shadow theater with transparent and opaque glass space, so to obtain a chromatic shadow theater. In most of Sherbart's plays, the stage directions describe astral settings utopian, subhuman or superhuman places as uh, underground, a great star palace in the dark central sun, a white scene, a summer wonderland, gar wonderland garden, in the near future on the boards of a blue theatre, to name just a few. Astral motifs run through his entire oeuvre. In Sherbat's writings, uh, the stage is the place where utopias make their alli alliances with science and technology. In a writing about the simple stage, uh, the Einfache Bühne, he states uh, that uh, three simple white or pa plainly colored walls are abundantly sufficient, and he pays a great attention to the technical and practical aspects of the theatre. In each of his writings we can find the longing for the fusion of terrestrial and celestial elements. To name just one example, Das Kosmische Theater, the Cosmic Theatre, presents a me meta-theatrical situation showing connections between the smallest things and the cosmos. For instance, for instance, a spherical shape of cheese becomes the corresponding element of the cosmos. A drop of blood is meant as a red star. The infinitely small and the universal correspond. So how can Bruno Tauter be in his writings dedicated to architecture? He published in Der Sturm, Eine Notwendigkeit, a necessity in 14, 
in which he urged artists uh, to create a new Gesamtkunstwerk uh, to which architecture would give frame and content. What sort of architecture? A transparent one made of colored light, an architectural A pivotal writing is uh, Zumnoyan Theaterbau for a new theater house. Taut speaks against the separation imposed by the curtain. It is an essential topic. It relates to the communication between the spectators and the actors, the hall and the stage, and it implies that the theme of the movements of the early 20th century, the stage must inebriate of our days and the topic which implies the main role of light and of lighting. The court composition Paul Sherbat's star and planetary dramas, which take place in cosmic case, space. For Taut, they are a significant example of the new dramaturgy, which leads to indivi the individual into the space without the dimension of it, width, and that. When Taut writes about the necessity of considering the whole and the stage as a whole while conceiving stage lighting, he refers also to Max Reinhardt. Even if not mentioned, what he is referring to is the miracle presented in the Olympia Hall in London in 1911. Different reasons make this performance a major reference in the history of the theory history of this play. In 1924, the cathedral moved into and merged with the new modernist architecture. The myth of the cathedral takes us back to, to the collaboration with Sherbart uh, for the glass house built for the Cologne Werkbund Ausstellung in 1914. In this project of the Glass Palace, Taut concretely experiments with his ideas concerning performance. That's my opinion. It could be considered as a step taken by Taut's project toward the theater. The Glass House is emblematic of transparency as the condition of fluidity in the relationship between the precursor can be considered the glass and iron architecture houses. Despite the collaborations with German industry, the glass house was not an, industri an industrial showcase. According to Ange Angelica Ticket, it is the first case where architecture shows itself, puts itself on display we could say, puts itself on stage in a immersive dimension. A strong relationship is a sentence of the time. Alles fließt, alles bewegt sich, all flows, everything moves. In the glass house, the opening on the first floor makes it possible to see the water from below. Water interacts with currents of different sorts animate the glass house whose life is based on the inflow of energy, force, movement, the inflow of fresh air through electric ventilation, the inflow of daylight, the sound of the water, a true animation of the space. We can speak of dramaturg dramaturgical composition and of light direction. Moreover, light acquires a space dimension through stained glass. Werkbund Ausstellung, the exhibition, where Henry Vadevelde built a theater quoted by Taut in Zumnoyan Theaterbau, we saw also in the presentation of Marvin Carson in the opening day of the conference. Bruno Taut wrote, um, the ceiling, uh, as the ceiling had stained glass windows, a Taut ask, and Taut asks that this should also extend to the walls of the hall. Walls should not exist, but dissolve into shapes and colors. One more element of Taut theatrical practice is his activity as a set designer. 
that is in the collaboration with the stage director Karl Heinz Martin in 1921 to stage the Jungfrau von Orleans. He published his notes in the Blätter des Deutschen Theaters, setting out his ideas of the dematerialization of the stage through glass, light and color. He wants to make the scenography fade into the background, dissolving in protruding from the stage into the spectator space. The realization, some sketches, the realization, this is an important study uh, about the, the glass house project in 1914. Stained glass glasses were lit by a projector of atmosphere of a gothic cathedral. A lighting direction, even a dramaturgy of light, was at work using blue for mysticism, red for feeling, green for heart, and so on. The whole scale of nuances, they are not natural phenomena, but arise from the content of the actions by lighting up or darkening, wrote Taut. Taut's vision of a continuity between the natural outside space and the interior of the building, according to the potential of light, and his interest in medieval architecture are involved in the restoration of the Unterrichsigen Church Choir in 1908. The sketches show vivid colors, but we know that Taut wanted the windows to be without colored glass to let daylight in, which would have changed the effect in the space depending on the time of the day. Going back to Sherbert, in his novels, light is everywhere. It is a space light, a volumetric light capable of composing a space. In his writings, theatre often recurs together with botanical, cosmic, planetary worlds. On close analysis, various cross references are created between Sherbert's visions, Taut's projects, the new architecture of glass and light the fusion of words and species, and the stage. Another topic related to all these elements is the garden. One of the most recurring situations in Sherbert's narrative is the story of a staging, or even a natural green setting which becomes theatre. Just a couple of examples from Das Große Licht, The Great Light, 1912, a series of novels in which the Baron of Munchhausen is the main character and narrator. The Cosmic Postillion, a puppet theatre tale, presents Munchhausen in 1905, discussing with many actors and writers in Vienna about the new puppet theatre. The Baron, over 180 years old, states that the most significant puppet theatre is not in Vienna, but in Celebs, in Indonesia. In the novel, this puppet theatre turns out to be an astral theatre, where the narrator describes star birds from nebulae and densities of comets. The planetary landscape is transformed by Sherbert into a wonderful performance. In the three arboreal states, a state tale, the Baron tells of Constantinople in 95. In a garden by the sea, fireworks are set up, then illuminated with an electric light that changes color every five minutes, thanks to colored glass devices. Swans wear electric flames around their neck and other lighting details. Also in this case, natural, artificial, astral lights interact as well as dramaturgy and the landscape. For Anne Krauter, Das Große Licht is a manifest for the kaleidoscopic glass and light architecture, a manifest for a kaleidoscopic glass and light architecture. We could uh, say a manifest for a kaleidoscopic glass and light architectural theatre. Sherbert's entire oeuvre themes with vegetation, exotic, fantastic flowers, plants of a thousand species. His passion for greenhouses is demonstrated 
also by the postcard sent to Richard Demel and representing the Parliament House in Berlin, the Alem Botanical Garden. Uh, in his most famous writing, Glass Architecture, 1914, he devoted a chapter to beauty on earth when glass architecture will be everywhere. And uh, uh, he wrote uh, that uh, we should have uh, a paradise on earth and no need to watch in longing expectation for the paradise in heaven. So I finish with the picture I put at the beginning of my paper and uh, I have some, if I have some more time, uh, I would give uh, some example of possible connection, they are just suggestions with uh, contemporary arts and theatre and even with our conceptions. Thank you. <laughs> I see. So, uh, to, to, I would like just to suggest some references to poetics and thoughts uh, that seem to me to be particularly resonant with the visions I have suggested here. Think of the transparency between the theatre and the town in Lina Bobardi's Teatro Officina in San Paolo, so well studied by uh, Evelyn. Uh, and I, often uh, compare this uh, picture by Evelyn, who published also in a magazine uh, in Shami Ricerche last, last year, I compare with this picture of uh, uh, an installation of Shank Scully Long Light in the Villa Panza Greenhouse in Varese. Um, another example uh, is uh, uh, Manuele Coccia, the Italian philosopher of gardens of botanical botany. In his uh, The Life of Plants, uh, he uh, writes in the introduction, we barely speak of them, the plants, and their name escapes us. Philosophy has always overlooked them more out of contact than out of neglect. This statement is followed by a note that mentions the only great exception in modernity, Gustav Theodor Fechner, the author so often cited in the letters of a Gleisenekette. Then think of the landscape philosopher Gilles Clément, who wrote the Manifest for the Third Landscape, and uh, <coughs> who collaborated, uh, who speaks of a planetary garden, and he collaborated with the Italian artist Leonardo De Logu, since a lot of years, uh, and his project Casa Dome, devoted to the relationship between body and landscape. Uh, on stage, uh, we can think uh, of examples, there are really a lot, uh, I took some one, uh, some, just some uh, cases, uh, uh, lighting design and scenography such as in Robert Carson Alcina by Handel, where the stage opens to the green and the open air space in all directions, uh, lighting by Jean Kahneman and scenography by Tobias Hoheisel. Or the work and conception of a lighting designer as Pasquale Mali, with whom I collaborate in writing a book last year, who never forgets the space outside of the theatre building. See, for instance, a deep by Mario Martone and Mimo Palladino, where space and lighting are conceived as a whole with the spectator space and lighting design interacts with the architecture as if daylight would penetrate the space through the stage grid. Where <coughs> or the staging of Solaris, directed by Andrea De Rosa from Lem's science fiction novel, where a large circular screen plays as a big eye showing images of the planet outside. Indeed, in this project, the director thought of the image, images of the planet as the images of the Earth taken by the space, the images from the International Space Station. A hole that is, um, and uh, regarding this, concerning this uh, um, performance, uh, uh, lighting designer Pasquale Mari 
wrote, a hole that I always look for in the darkness of the theater space to look beyond the limits of the building and open it up to the light outside, to the light of the world. Here, this hall serves to show recurring sunrises and sunsets over the ocean of Solaris, eclipses, days and nights. A last example, the uh, beautiful and interesting work of uh, and projects of Oliver Eliasson. Among them, Life at the Bayer Foundation last year in Basel, where the garden really penetrate uh, uh, inside uh, the space of the museum space. Uh, there are no more differences uh, uh, between uh, the uh, landscape uh, and the, the space uh, devoted to art. Uh, he wrote <coughs> concerning this project, uh, with life I work actively to create a space of a coexistence among those involved in and affected by the exhibition, the art institution, my artwork, the visitors, other beings then join in, the trees and other plants in the park, the urban landscapes, the ur urban uh, landscapes that surrounds the museum and beyond. Last image uh, during the night, uh, and here we must we should uh, also uh, ask uh, what is theater today? What uh, do we mean with performance? Uh, and there are all uh, beautiful example of how extended is this uh, concept today. Thank you very much. Obrigada. Thank you a lot, Cristina Grazio, Professor Cristina Grazioli. But thank you for your excellent lecture. So we have uh, we have some minutes, and uh, uh, we have here a question from Professor Vanessa Oliveira, and uh, she asks uh, if uh, there is any relationship uh, between uh, Sheabat and Taut and Strindberg's concept of dream. Can you say anything about it? Um, and I never found uh, uh, Strindberg uh, quoted by these authors, uh, but I think uh, that uh, the context uh, is uh, very close, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, conception of uh, um, dream theater or something beyond the reality um, achieved by the means of light and lighting experimentation. I think in this sense it's uh, quite close to Strindberg because Strindberg didn't only uh, write uh, plays uh, but also experimented with lighting and we have documentation about uh, this and Strindberg was also very known in German in Germany so uh, He's not quoted, but I think it's a possible reference. Thanks. Uh, I have a question myself, <laughs> and, and, and about uh, Vasily Kandinsky, the Gelbe Klang, uh, the yellow sound. Is yes. there uh, any relationship? Uh, Taut known uh, Kandinsky yes. and, and his project. Yes. I, I think uh, the, the yellow sound is uh, well known. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, among uh, uh, yeah, so historians of theater, unfortunately, yes, Bruno yes. Taut it's not not so uh, yeah, it's not well known. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, uh, the Gebert Lang is the main uh, reference uh, in the artistic uh, context of the time and it was published in 1912 uh, and so I think uh, Taut should uh, know it and the uh, Weltbaumeister is very close as a conception uh, um, as concept uh, to the yellow sound uh, it's really um, maybe it's uh, architecture is really the main uh, um, character of the architectural drama uh, by Taut and uh, in Kandinsky it's more the spiritual as 
sense that of the human being. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Oh. Anyway, uh, Tao, uh, I'm I'm reading a lot of essays by Tao, but mm -hmm. as he wrote a lot. Uh, he wrote uh, um, almost on architecture. But in his writings on architecture, we can find important references, mm -hmm. as I showed. And uh, um, till now, I didn't find uh, this reference. But I think that Kandinsky was really uh, well known by all artists uh, in of the course. German cultural ca context of the beginning of the, the century. Thank you, Leonard. So I think we have no more questions. No, I have a comment. So, fantastic, please, Evelyn. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> uh, I thank you very much for approximating uh, architecture and light and transparency and, and bringing Bruno Taut, which is the most important expressionist architect. So I think it was very, very interesting. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. I thank you. And thank you, everybody. Um, so, Professor, uh, could you speak a little bit more about the kaleidoscopic experience and the uh, uh, and the merging, the merging of space time and uh, exterior and interior space uh, at Gla at Glass House? Yes, do, do you yeah. understand the, the question? Yes. Um, thank you, Ana Paula. Um, yeah, the um, scholars have investigated uh, from the architecture point, point of view the reconstruction of this um, famous uh, pavilion, this crystal palace or glass palace, and uh, um, they evidenced the, the, um, the connection of the lighting without uh, uh, projected also, um, designed also artificial lamps inside the pavilion and also commissioned to several artists glass um, paintings, paintings on, gla on glass. Uh, so there was a, a complex uh, direction uh, design of the interior concerning lighting, but the most important element is the fact that all these lights interacted with the outside, so with the, um, with the different conditions of the weather and uh, with the daylight and during the night all uh, stopped. And uh, um, Yes, there is uh, really um, a, a lot of elements uh, that make us think uh, about performance. So Taut conceived a particular uh, path, a particular movement of the visitors, uh, not only the um, uh, looking at the work, but really to, uh, to live inside the space. So that's why I, I spoke of an immersive space, what we nowadays call immersive space. Um, I don't know if I answered. <laughs> okay, I have one more <laughs> about Sheabat. Uh, yeah. Were Sheabat's drama effectively staged, all of them? Not all of them. He wrote really, really a lot. They were very short dramas, one, two, four pages, something like that. Uh, but uh, um, 12 of them were staged and also in famous uh, theater, Max Reinhardt Theater, for instance, or other theaters in Berlin. Uh, that's why I, I, I'm saying that uh, he was uh, uh, a, a, an artist of theatre, it's, it's 
not only an imagined theatre, so a metaphor of literary theatre, he knew very well uh, the, the word of the theatre practice. And for instance, uh, the Comet and Dance, the Dance of the Comets, it was previewed to be staged in Vienna uh, by Gustav Mahler, who was the director of the theater, opera theater, and uh, he wanted to commission the music to Strauss. So to say that uh, there are a lot of, uh, or for another uh, drama, um, Sherbert wanted to, to have as interpreter, as a, um, an actor, Rudolf Blümner, uh, that is one of the most famous uh, actors of the expressionism. Uh, so it's really very close uh, to the practice of the theatre, but ignored and not studied. <laughs> but that nowadays he's known especially as a science fiction uh, writer, yeah? Yes, he's known... Uh, uh, most for the science fiction and also for his essay uh, glass architecture 